Hello, and welcome back to the third episode of How to Actually Improve a Monster Hunter. The last two chapters, we learned about system mechanics and how to apply them to a hunt, as well as weak spots and vital areas. This chapter will be covering proper positioning. Though limited in Monster Hunter, movement is a critical aspect, as where you are and where you're going can have an effect on various outcomes, not just pertaining to motion itself. When you hear the term proper positioning, you may just be thinking of where to stand in order to avoid an attack. However, proper positioning runs way deeper than that. The offensive and defensive capabilities stem from any movement or action taken to land or evade an attack, and there are several types. For today, we'll be focusing on two of the most common and effective forms. The first form is adjustment positioning. Adjustment positioning is any movement or action taken to reset or reposition yourself in a particular area. There are also different situations you can adjust in. Let's say for this scenario, you have Rathalos toppled or stunned. If you're positioned at Rathalos' legs, you should already know you're not in the right place. You don't have to do excessive movements. Subtle ones can also be just as impactful. You can walk, evade, attack move, silkbind skill, swap scroll evade, and more. You can also use these methods to readjust yourself after certain weapon attacks move you a bit too far into a poor hitbox zone. Another instance is on-the-fly adjustments during sustained combat. If I'm not where my target part is, I can take actions to realign myself in a more aggressive manner with the aforementioned motions. Say that the monster you're fighting either presses its body into you or pushes you away, throwing off your placement and forcing your attacks to hit undesired parts. Simply take a second, realign, and continue where you left off. Repeat when necessary. The next form is preemptive positioning, which is positioning yourself in anticipation for an action. This can be done by just moving in the direction that will benefit you the most for the next perceived event. Monsters provide physical and auditory cues for anything they do, and even if they do surprise you sometimes, you'll get very used to these tells and know a little more on where to stand in order to produce results. Looking at a monster like Mizutsune, enough experiences with it will have you privy to how it roars. Whether that be normal or enraged, it always jumps a 90 degree angle to either your left or your right. If you want to get ahead of that jump, you're going to need to find a way to get there before it does. Every weapon is capable of preemptive positioning, but Greatsword is more commonly recognized due to the spacing and footwork required to land charged attacks. This isn't solely performed as movement and can be used when aiming and directing attacks. For instance, Longsword Special Chief can be cancelled out of attacks and pointed in any direction the player so chooses. Coupled with the knowledge that the direction the sword swings is from the left of your body to the right, players will adjust their bodies so that the instance the counter is performed, it will strike a particular part that they were aiming for. For now, it's best to experiment with what your weapon has to offer in the form of mobility while practicing your spacing and positioning. My best monster recommendation for this is Rathian. Initially, it was going to be Xenogre, but I found that Rathian is a more comfortable middle ground for less experienced and intermediate players trying to practice on something that won't move too fast or too slow with recognizable attack patterns and rewarding punishes. Now let's get to the demo. I'm going to start this hunt off with a combination of adjustment and preemptive positioning. Starting combat with a monster always elicits a roar, which I can counter. When successfully countering with Elemental Burst Counter, the hunter lunges forward as they slash. This can cause attacks to hit undesired parts and really scuff the damage output. So I do a quick backwards evade in order to prep myself. I didn't think I had the time to forward evade for the adjustment to land my burst counter, so I opted to walk away from the explosion instead. Hindsight 2020, I could have just rolled forward and then already had the EDC wait. This is the instance I'm talking about for subtlety. I don't need to evade spam to get where I need to be. I can pace myself to get into position. I may not be hitting the head, but it's still hitting regardless. This time I evade defensive, but I walk back to my intended position. Once I get the topple, I adjust my positioning to ensure my attacks land on the head and don't miss or hit the wing by accident. 
Now, because I feel that there weren't enough examples for preemptive positioning in that single hunt, I'm going to switch it up and show you individual instances so that, you know, there's more of a concrete image in your mind. So here we go. Hopefully these examples painted a better picture of what I was trying to explain when it came to preemptive positioning. However, I'm not done just yet. We still have the psycho hunt to go through. Target. This is a subject that has a lot of nuances due to weapon variety, so in order to generalize the concepts and a digestible explanation and not overwhelm newcomers, I'm going to separate the basics from the specifications until a later date. It's all about baby steps, and right now it's best to practice these topics to develop consistency rather than just trying to skip straight to the part where you're quote unquote good. Remember. Positioning isn't always about crazy technical 4K brain maneuvers. Simple or subtle motions can have just as big an impact so long as you understand where you are, where you're going, and what you're trying to achieve. So next episode, we'll be discussing pattern recognition. Keep up the good work, and until next time.